Good morning and welcome to Center Point Church. We are so glad that you're here with us. We welcome all of those that are here in person. We also welcome you and your family that are watching with us online. We ask that you please stand and join us as we worship. I would like to read a psalm, Psalms 111, 111 verses 1 through 10 says, Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, amen? He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, enacted in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people, amen? He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. Can we say amen to that? Hallelujah. So we raise a hallelujah this morning. We give you praise, Jesus. We welcome you here today, God. Hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. Sing it out. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a
give a shout of praise to God? Yes, Jesus, we love you. We worship you, God. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. May this next song be your prayer this morning. Where you get to say, I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. Isn't that true? We get to walk in here this, this morning and just lift up our hands to God and declare, I love you, Lord, and your mercy never fails me. Because it's true, he never fails us. He never forsakes us. Amen? Hallelujah.
Well, thanks for joining us this morning. We're so glad you're here. Our, our worship time that you experienced uh, was a pre-recorded worship time because uh, we've changed some things for the next three weeks mm -hmm. and that um, uh, you probably have gotten the message already. But uh, because of the number of people who have COVID or are, have been exposed to COVID in this season, uh, it really impacted uh, the volunteers that it takes for sure us to, uh, to for us to have a service. And so we are going to have a service at the theater, but it, we are going to turn the next three weeks into a prayer time. And that came because uh, we got together as a leadership team of board and staff mm -hmm. and uh, and had discussions about what to do in this moment right. because we know what happened in 2020 and and we had to make some decisions and so we really thought about that and said let's maybe god wants us to make a different decision in 2022 and in that time of of prayer and discussion I felt the Lord guiding us to to uh, to teach our people to pray, to teach Center Point Church to to help you pray because that's what we do in crisis. Right. right. We pray, and that's what the body of Christ needs to do together, and that is prayer. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to take the next three weeks to do that. So Esther and I today mm -hmm. are going to guide you in in prayer, yeah. and we'll do a couple of things. Uh, to do that. We want you to grab some things, uh, maybe press pause right now, um, but, but grab some things and like a journal, mm -hmm. a Bible, and a pen, um, and some communion elements, yes. Yes. and perhaps your phone so that you can text in prayer requests during our time together. But we've been in a series, and we're going to continue it though, and, mm -hmm. it's, and it's called Engage. And, and I just really believe that we need to re-engage in, uh, in the spirit, some spiritual practices so that we can go into this year and, and really capture the mission that God has for Amen. us with the assignment Amen. that God has yes. for us in 2022. Yes. And the way that you are strong, mm -hmm. the, way that you, the way that you begin is, is having some times of prayer, getting to know God in a deeper way so that you can have strength to do what he asks you to do. Mm -hmm. uh, my prayer this whole time for us as a church is that we would know him better. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 1, 15 and 19 says, For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for mm -hmm. all the saints, I've not yeah. stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, and I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, mm -hmm. may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation Amen. so that you may know him better. And so I also pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, mm -hmm. the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparably great power for us who believe. So we want you to know that this may be a season that we are in where there is, there seems to be confusion around us and some crisis around us. The pandemic is all around us. But that does not mean that believers are people without hope. That's right. We are people That's of right. hope. And we need to put our trust in the Amen. Lord. Amen. So we're asking you to engage in, in several things. Uh, prayer, the word, the community. And so we want you to engage in those elements, but today we want to focus in on prayer. I saw this picture, I was scrolling on Facebook, and I saw this picture of this church in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And in that, in that picture, the picture I, I thought was from the back of the church to the front of the church, but at a, at a closer look at it, it's from the front to the back because there's, there, everyone is kneeling. They're mm -hmm. kneeling on the mm -hmm. pews Wow. And there are hundreds and hundreds of people in the church, and they are all kneeling and praying. Mm -hmm. And and then uh, in the the explanation, it's this is what happens an hour before service, wow. Wow. every service. And that's why Brazil and Argentina had these amazing seasons of revival, where yes. tens of thousands of people got mm -hmm. saved in a short amount wow. of time because God's people prayed. And I think so that's so important for us to pray. Yes. 
-hmm. And then uh, I've been studying the book of Mark this year. And so I get to chapter nine <laughs> and, uh, and, and the disciples bring, or people bring this, this boy who was demon possessed mm -hmm. and they bring him to Jesus and said, your disciples tried to cast out the demon, mm. but they couldn't. Mm. And, and then Jesus, he rebukes them and speaks to them, but he, but he concludes with this kind only come out through prayer. Mm -hmm. And uh, some writers later on added the words fasting and prayer. Mm. Um, but this kind, and which, which made me think, what does that mean, this yeah, kind? kind. Uh, because in Mark chapter 6, just three chapters earlier, Mark describes uh, Jesus sending out the disciples, and he sends them out to go in the villages and cast out demons, heal the sick, and preach the so kingdom. So they're doing it, right? So yeah. they're doing it. Right, right. And they come back and they, ce they celebrate that they were able to cast mm -hmm. out demons. Mm -hmm. And then they get to chapter 9, and the disciples try and cast out a demon, but he's not able to. And Jesus said, this kind. Hmm. And um, so really was reflecting on that a little bit, and which, which just tells me there's something different about that, that one. And, and I just tried to connect it to where we are at. There's something different about this season. There's something different about where we are at. Desperate times call for desperate prayers. That's right. And I That's think right. we're in a season where we need to pray. Amen. John, John yeah. Ortberg, in his, in his book, uh, Living the Life You've Always Wanted, says that prayer is interrupting heaven. <laughs> and what happens on earth happens because people pray. Yes. And then he says, history belongs to the intercessors. I love that. <laughs> history belongs to the intercessors. Wow, that's a powerful statement. So yeah. are we, mm. you know, are we making history, changing history? Yeah. Um, Thomas Merton in his book, Contemplative Prayer, writes, We do not want to be beginners, but let us be convinced of the fact that we will never be anything else but beginners all of our lives. So we're all learning to pray. Always. We're all growing yes. in this idea mm -hmm. of, of prayer. I was um, a, a friend of ours, a pastor in Arlington Assembly of God, passed away mm -hmm. just a few days ago. And uh, I remember being in a meeting with him, and he's, a, he's an older gentleman, but just he has this amazing smile and always engaged Rich you. Rich Neubauer. Rich yes. Neubauer. He, oh, you could tell he'd been in the presence of the mm -hmm. Lord. And I was in a minister's meeting, and they asked him to, to pray. They pr just pray over a meal, if they ask him to. And he says, uh, in his deep, distinguished voice, he says, Sweet God Almighty. <laughs> and, uh, and we all just stood still. It was, it was almost a thunderous prayer. And then he prays with such joy on his face. You could tell that... He had been with Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think I looked at the guy next to me and said, that's not his first prayer. <laughs> you know? He'd been with Jesus. Amen. And, uh, Amen. And so there are those kinds Amen. of people, but we grow to that. I mean, the, many years of being in God's presence. Yes. Uh, you observe that in his life. It's that history with God, right? That you history just... with God. Wow. So, so we're going to do a few things together. Um, we're going, to, we're going to pray and we're going to create some space. Uh, I always say that a quiet time is defined by having quiet and having time. So, <laughs> there you go. so uh, we're going to have some, do a couple of things in prayer. We're going to lead you over the next, I don't know how long it'll be, uh, in prayer. And we're going to, we're going to take communion together and we're going to do that first. So grab your communion elements. Mm -hmm. We're going to come to the cross. And if you were at the theater with us, you, we, uh, we have stations for people. We have a cross. And uh, we're going to think about that and think about a time of repentance. Um, we're going to pray for others, people around us, and bring our requests to the Lord. And then we're going to pray for healing. Uh, there are many people yeah, that need so healing. And then we're going to have a, a time of thanksgiving. So um, 
we haven't practiced this, mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. we're just going to pray together as if we, as if Esther and I were sitting in the, the living room with you. So let's begin. Let's begin with communion. Generally, we, we usually end our services with communion, but mm -hmm. this time, but uh, I read a sentence that said, if you're going on a trip, you want to make sure you eat. <laughs> and so make sure that you're ready. And uh, so I kind of think of communion that way of eating and, and drinking because thinking of what's most important, yeah, right? The, the, the so it's it's represents the the body and the and the blood of Christ. And so mm -hmm. if you'll grab your communion elements and let's think about this together. Mm -hmm. We have some with us and um, so let me just pray first. All right. Um, before we partake father we just come before you yes, Lord. we thank you for this moment we thank you for center point church and we thank you for the people that would join us today we pray in this moment that you mm -hmm. would yes, um, that your anointing would rest on Jesus. us and your Jesus. presence would be with us we know lord in um, when there is communion in the body of christ it does represent your presence. You've invited us, your mm. people, Thank you, to Jesus. come around a table Thank together you, and remember what you did. And so help us to remember. We commit this moment to you in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. So Jesus, when he got his uh, disciples together, he, um, he, he broke bread. <laughs> and, he, and he took the bread and he broke it and he said this is my body which is broken for you and uh, and we remember when we partake of the bread or maybe you have a cracker or whatever it is remember the body of Christ which was broken for us and I remember that his body is broken so that I may be whole that's right he mm -hmm. was the uh, sacrificial lamb mm -hmm. he was the bread of life he was the he was pure um, the bread that they would have eaten in that moment would have been unleavened bread so without sin mm -hmm. and he's saying that's that's me I'm the bread of life and I'm to be broken for you and it represents what is going to happen uh, when he gets to the cross and so let's partake of the bread together So just take a moment and thank the Lord. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done for us. I imagine during that time around the table that uh, right before Jesus spoke, they were talking about their life and where they were at and, and uh, they were telling stories with each other. We tell the same story. Every communion, we tell the same story. Mm -hmm. That Jesus died on the cross. Amen. And then in the, in the middle of that meal, Jesus takes the cup. And he says, um, this is a new covenant in my blood. Which means the old covenant is now complete. Mm. It's now complete. Everything that they had done to remind them of of God's salvation or God's forgiveness is going to be complete in Jesus Christ. Yes. The old sacrificial system is now complete in Jesus. Mm -hmm. So he says, this is a new covenant in my blood. So the new, when he talks about blood, it's sealing, sealing the covenant. And he says, every time you do this, every time you eat the bread and drink the cup, you do this in remembrance of me. And so the cup reminds us mm -hmm of the precious blood of Jesus Christ Amen. That, that was shed for each one of us. Mm -hmm. Let's partake of the cup together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let's pause for a moment and thank the Lord. Lord Jesus, we give you honor and glory thank for you, what you Jesus, did for us on the cross. For your salvation, for your grace. Lord, we are set free because of what you did. For your so salvation, for your grace. And we will not forget. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Amen. 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 You know, after the, after that supper, the 
you know, the Last Supper, Jesus goes to, he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane, he prays, mm -hmm. along with the disciples. And then Jesus is arrested. Mm -hmm. And he was tried, and he was beaten, and, and um, he was tortured and beaten. And, and then they take him to the cross. He's made to carry his own cross. So I want us right now to think about the cross and what, what was put on the cross. It was mm -hmm. my sin, your sin. Yeah. And um, Jesus also went around before that. Jesus went around and he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Mm -hmm. And so he preached this repentance. So there is this, this, uh, this thing that Jesus took upon himself the sins of the whole world. Yes. So when we come to Jesus, there's a time of repentance, of surrendering what we've held on to, the sins that we've held on to, and surrendering it to him, knowing that he took that on yeah. the cross. And so we want to have a moment of just repenting hmm. and asking the Lord to, to forgive us. We do not have to beg the Lord to forgive us. But there is a sense where we come to Him in repentance, where we are reminded of where we came from. Yes. A person is not really set free, or, or they don't live in freedom if they don't remember, mm -hmm. you know, the captivity. Yes, and, and so it's a daily thing. It Maybe is. It is a daily thing. And repenting, confession, that is, that is a daily thing. A daily thing. Yes. So First Peter two twenty four says this. It says he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness, because by his wounds we are healed. Mm -hmm. Amen. First mm -hmm. um, Corinthians one eighteen says, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved. It is the power of God. And I have 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. And he will forgive us our sins and, pro and purify us from all unrighteousness. If you were at the theater, we, um, we will have cards and nails and a hammer mm. in front of the cross. Amen. Where people can write down a confession Write down maybe, you know, something just they're struggling with. Something they're yeah. struggling with, right? We mm -hmm. all do. Which, that is so true, right? <laughs> right. Um, uh, because we're humans. That's right. Yeah. Yes. And so they would write it down, and then uh, somebody would take that card and nail it uh, to the cross. It's a visual. Uh, it's just and, exactly and, what Christ does for us. Yeah. So I'd like us to kind of have that visual today. I want you to yes. think about the things that you struggle with. And maybe you've never given you've never mm. given your life to Christ before in a in a complete surrender way. This would be a great opportunity to say, I, I completely surrender my life to Jesus Christ and recognize what you did on the cross. What for Christ my sin. did, yes. Amen. 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 Let's just pray together. Father, I just, we come before you thanking you for sending your son Jesus to die on a cross for us. Yes, yes. And rising Lord. from the dead. And I just sense that there's probably somebody at home mm -hmm. that's watching that uh, has been struggling with, with sin issues. And they haven't been able to uh, completely surrender those things or they haven't been able to overcome those things. 
But God, your cross reminds us that you took that on yourself. Yes, you, you did. received the sins yes, of the whole Jesus. world. Yes. Your cross reminds us, oh God, of the penalty and the price of sin. Mm. Your cross reminds us of the where the wrath of God and the grace of God meet together. Yes, Jesus. It's at the cross. But we also remember the resurrection. And because you rose from the dead, O oh God, and conquered death in the grave. <laughs> yes, amen. Amen. And because you live within us. Lord God. Lord, we do not have to be stuck in the grave. No. Lord, we, we can have power because of Jesus to mm -hmm. overcome. I pray for your people, Jesus. Heal them of their sin. Forgive their sins, O oh God. Mm -hmm. Let them come to you. Let them live in victory. Mm -hmm. God, I ask for people mm -hmm. who haven't yet surrendered to you, that this would be a moment in which Amen. they completely surrender everything, their yes. whole life. They surrender to you. Mm -hmm. In fact, the cross, the passion of Christ is a reminder of the surrender even of yes. Jesus, Jesus to the will of the Father. And uh, so we surrender to you, God. Amen. We love Amen. you, Lord. Amen. Thank you for this moment. Amen. And you know, I just want to say for those of you who may be struggling with those patterns that don't seem to go away, and you pray and you pray, you know, some, uh, it was Dr. Alicia Britt Scholey that once said, you know, it's not a, a, a linear journey where you're just going from point A right. to point z you know which is heaven it's really a cyclical journey yeah. so we we feel like we fall backwards at times but you're always slowly moving forward and so as you live a life of repentance yeah. and daily coming before the lord saying i need your presence to help mm. me continue to live a holy life as time goes on, you look back and you see how much, how far you have actually come, right. you know. But on the day-to-day -day basis, you don't always see it. Uh, but I tell you what, it is so worth just the effort to come before the Lord yeah. daily in repentance and saying, Lord, what is the, what was there today that I needed to really change mm -hmm. or w what you weren't pleased with? And the Holy Spirit is is very is, is so kind and good, but he does remind us of those things and we can come in repentance. Yes. It is put under the blood of Jesus and we move on and we move forward. So I love the power yeah. of repentance. Yeah, let's read your the verse that you read, 1 John 1, 19. Read that again. If we confess our sins, yeah. he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. Let's just claim that. Let's Amen. Like, yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Well, I want to transition to praying for others and um, not for healing in this moment because we're going to get okay. to that. All, all right? right. So this is really just praying for others or really um, bringing our needs mm -hmm. to the Lord yeah. and just in prayer. Um, you know, you could call it intercession, yes. whatever you want to call it. We uh, Ephesians 6.18 says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Mm -hmm. With this in mind, be alert and, be, oh, and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Philippians 4.6 says, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And uh, I like to think about coming into the throne room of grace mm. and where Jesus is invited, actually invited us in. He wants us to come in. Mm -hmm. we're, we're asked to bring our, our request boldly to him. Yes. You yes. know, and that's, that's out of a relationship. That's not out that's of right. some kind of arrogance. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not, it's not demanding. Mm -hmm. It's, but it's kind of like a kid asking a parent for something. Right? right? They're bold, they boldly ask because they, they know you. They know your back. mom and dad and they keep coming back. And, Please! Right. And we're asked to ask, seek, knock, and yeah. continue to pray. We pray for the lost. That's right. We pray for our friends. We pray for the needs that we have and others have. What else do we pray for? We pray for schools mm. around us today. The government. The government. 
-hmm. You know, and whatever's on your heart, that's where you pray. Mm -hmm. I was um, reading a book that talked about prayer and it, and some people have a struggle praying because they think they're supposed to pray for certain things and they're not passionate about those things. <laughs> and uh, I was encouraging someone last week, start with praying where you're passionate. Absolutely. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Maybe that's the work of the Spirit in your life. Because we can want to give up, you know? Yeah. There's just so much to pray for. But I also ask the Holy Spirit to bring people to mind. Uh, of course, I keep lists as well, but, but that can be overwhelming. So I, you do. You, you ask the Holy Spirit to bring to mind. You ask the Holy Spirit to guide you in your praying. Right. He does. That's praying in the Spirit, allowing mm -hmm. this Holy Spirit to guide you in prayer. Mm -hmm. Pray where you are passionate, and you will become more passionate for prayer. That's true. That is very true. I've just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's... Uh, Let's pray together, and you can text the number will be on the screen. You just text us prayer requests as well, and yeah. and uh, and we'll we'll we may read those in a corporate setting uh, at the theater. So just text us right now what your prayer requests are, and uh, and we'll pray for you. But let's spend a moment or two, mm -hmm. and you bring your requests to the Lord. Yes, and then Esther will close that moment out for us. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your grace and your goodness. Thank you, Lord God, for your blessing. Oh, God, move in our church, Lord Jesus. Lord, oh, God, God, help us. Have your way, God. I need you, Lord. Lord, we are so grateful that we can come to you with every kind of request. There is nothing that is too large or too small for you, Father. And Lord, we pray today for our friends, mm. our families, our neighbors, our, our co-workers, Lord, for our government, for the um, schools, Lord, the health care all around us, Lord, that is, is just inundated with, with crises right now, with health. Father, we pray for you to work in a mighty way in all these areas. Father, I pray that as we continue to pray daily, Lord, that you would help us to strategically pray for things, Lord, asking your Holy Spirit to bring to mind what we should pray for, to help us to strategically list things, Father, that we continue to bring before your throne. Father, I pray that as we just... Um, dig in deeper this month. Lord, I pray for answered prayers. Mm. Father, I pray yes, that you Lord. would answer prayers, Lord, of your people that are taking time to, to just seek your face. Not because it's just what we want, but Lord, I pray for your kingdom to be expanded and for your will to be done. Yes, Lord. We love you, Lord. Amen. 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 We're going to take time right now to... Um, just pray for healing. Um, mm. and healing is one of those areas that can be hard to understand. And I know in our life, we had ex have experienced much healing. I mean, the longer yes, you have. walk with the Lord, right. the more you experience his miraculous power. I remember when our daughter was uh, terribly ill when she was ten, nine, nine years old yeah. and then 10, um, she was just juvenile rheumatoid arthritis pretty much crippled her and 
uh, the Lord in a year after we found out that diagnosis absolutely healed her dramatically and she has never had it since. And so we have that kind of history with God. Yes. There have been other times you were yeah. struggling with your back. I remember you couldn't get off the couch. It was yeah. We were young in ministry and Stephanie yeah. was about five and she comes in the room just jump. what's the matter, Daddy? And Daddy, Daddy's like, I can't move. <laughs> I have My back is out. Yeah. And she just real yeah. quickly said a prayer, kind of yeah. almost flippantly and she ran back out of the room. What did she says, Dear Jesus, heal Daddy. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Went out of the room, and you know what? His back was yeah, exactly. healed. Yeah, uh, it was. It just amazing, amazing. things like that. Yeah. Uh, I know many times our girls, all of four of them, had prayed for healing in different ways, and the Lord answered them. And then there are seasons where we're, we walk through, and the Lord doesn't seem to answer. Right. And we pray and we pray. It, it can be a, a condition of some sort, a healing. You know something that, ha you know, we just don't always understand healing. But I found this in a book I've been reading, um, A Guidebook to Prayer by Mary Kate Morse, mm -hmm. 24 Ways to Walk with God. And a powerful book just on the different ways you can pray together and separately. But anyway, she, she talks in here, praying, actually, I don't think this is her chapter, but um, there are different writers that write in here. Praying in Jesus' name is not a magic phrase, but a theological one. Because we all hear that, you know, ask in Jesus' name and anything you ask, you know, you'll, you'll get. In John 14, 15, and 16, Jesus says six times, ask in my name. So he is actually mm -hmm. telling us how to pray by saying, this is, you know, ask in my name. These passages are often taken out of context, though, and applied to healing prayer requests. Jesus says, if you believe in him, you will do the same works as him. But does that mean that he's going to always answer mm. your prayer the way you think? To pray in someone's name in first century Palestine me meant to have that person's authority and power. It also meant that a person belonged to the one named and that person's whole purpose was identical with the one named. In this context, Jesus is preparing the disciples for the continuation of his kingdom mission. Wow. The praying in Jesus' name is not an objective exercise to get something, but rather a subject-centered experience where we connect with someone, the Trinity, and become one in passion and purpose. Wow, that takes a whole different slant to our praying. Yeah. So when we pray in Jesus' name, it's in his authority and his power but it is for his mission, his glory, and his purpose in our lives. And so then we relinquish, okay, if you, you may not answer the way I think you should answer, but I will trust you anyway, because we are in this together. This, this, yes. we are in Amen. this together. So yes. we, we Praise pray God. for healing. We pray for God to answer our prayers, but we also remember that he is in control. Yes. Amen. So we keep asking, we keep praying in Jesus' name. Amen. So we want to, just right now, uh, you know, if you have your journal, you know, write down, write down the different things you're praying for as far as healing. Maybe you have a friend that needs healing. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's yourself. Maybe. But yeah. we are going to pray in Jesus' name with faith believing that he can move in that situation yeah. for his honor and glory and form and shape that person for his honor and glory. Absolutely. I want to encourage you too, if you are at the theater, uh, we will be anointing people who want to be, uh, who want to pray for healing, mm -hmm. um, anoint them with oil. You may have someone in your room that is not feeling well or, That's right. um, or sick. Why don't you as well go get some oil, olive oil, olive oil and, vegetable uh, oil, you know, some kind of oil. You know, for me, it's generally just put a little finger in the oil and, yes. and just put it on someone's forehead. Uh, so I it's not the you. oil that has right. the, <laughs> it's that, Jesus name that has the power. That's not the magic formula, right? <laughs> but, uh, you know, scripture talks about yes. anointing people with oil and it's kind of an act of faith. Yes, yes. Uh, to do that. Yes. And so just encourage you to do that. You want to start praying? Yes, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you that there is power in your name. Mm, yes, Lord. Lord Jesus, we can come in your authority, Father, and we can yes, pray Jesus. for the needs that we have. And, and many of those needs are healing needs, Lord, whether it is yes. physical, emotional, 
uh, whether it is spiritual, just different ways that we need to be healed, Father. We pray that you would have mm. your way in our situations. Lord, we, yes. of course, we pray for whole bodies, Lord. We pray yes. for health. Lord, in your name, we pray that your people would be healthy people. So, Lord, we pray in your name that you would heal. Yes. But, Father, we also pray that your kingdom would be established in us and through us, that we would have your mission as we pray, mm. Lord Jesus, and know that we are in in this with you, Father. You are forming and shaping mm. us for your glory. So, Father, we pray for those right now that are in need of desperate healing, Lord, or know someone that is. Father, we pray that as we, as we come together as your people, that you would do miracles among us. Yes. Lord, we ask that in your name. Thank Hallelujah, you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. And Lord, we are thankful for your word that tells us that uh, he was pierced for our transgressions. Yes. Crushed for our iniquities. The yes, punishment Lord. that brought us peace was on him. Mm. And by his stripes, we are we healed. Are healed. Amen. So, thank the Lord Amen. for his word. Oh my Amen. goodness. Yeah. Well, I want to uh, now switch to Thanksgiving prayers. Yes. And we are uh, grateful. Yes, because we are grateful people. Mm -hmm. And we are also going to combine that with giving as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you why here in just a second. But um, so Psalm 96 says this says, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. Mm -hmm. For great is the Lord. Amen. And most worthy of praise. Yes. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. Amen. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families and nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. And uh, just as a connection, there's a connection between giving and thanksgiving. That's right. You know, and so yes. I, even in this moment, as we're doing, as we are going to pray a prayer of thanksgiving, maybe it's a great opportunity to, uh, you know, just to bring an offering to the Lord. He goes on to say, worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad, let the sea resound, and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant, and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Amen. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes, he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the earth in righteousness, and the peoples in his faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Here's another thing I want you to, to encourage you to do, and that is to um, to write in your journal, if you have one, or write on a card, or write somewhere, the things that you are thankful for mm -hmm. in this moment. What are you thankful for? You can also text us those things as well, the things that you're thankful for. Um, and why don't you just name them right now? Just, mm -hmm. it, really, if you're, if you're on, if you're at home, just talk to the <laughs> talk to the computer or whatever you're watching all right <laughs> say this pastor keith i'm thankful for what are you thankful for oh family for you mm, thank you <laughs> yeah. i'm thankful for for health i yeah i was pretty sick a few weeks yes, ago so so thankful to be healthy again thankful for just the ability to eat Thankful for, I'm thankful to live in this country. Yes. Thankful for God's blessings on our lives. Thankful for friends. Yes. And the deep friendships that we mm -hmm. have. Thankful for our congregation, our church, yeah. leaders. We have uh, so much to be grateful we for. We have so much to be grateful for. What about you? What are you grateful for in mm -hmm. this moment? Mm -hmm. So let's thank God together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord. Just begin to name it. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. I'm thankful, Lord. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank the Lord Jesus for your goodness. Thank you, God, for your grace. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blessings. Thank you for mercies that are new and fresh mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. Thankful, Lord. Thankful, Lord, for our family. Yes. Thank you for our extended family, our church family. Thankful for this community, Fairfax and, and uh, Northern Virginia. Just grateful. Grateful for provision. Yes. Yes. Grateful for a warm house. Mm. I have a heating pad right here. <laughs> <Yo>. <laughs> grateful for my Thank heating pad. Heating pads. <laughs> Thank the Lord for his, uh, just the way he guides us to. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're, when you're grateful, you really, it takes your mind off of your problems. You know, when you're grateful, you really, it, it just points your mind in a healthy direction. Mm, amen. Living on, with an attitude of gratitude. Amen. So, amen. Well, thank you, Lord. We seal this moment with thanksgiving. Yes, thank In you. Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, I trust you've uh, um, enjoyed our time of prayer together. We also want to just recognize that to, tomorrow is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's where the nation celebrates not just a person. That's right. Oh. But... Uh, but his message as well, mm -hmm. that all people are equal, and, and we are in the sight of God, we are all equal. Amen. But it reminds us of the Christ as well, to, to bring that message. And um, so we celebrate his life, but we also celebrate his message. I believe that fasting and prayer should change us. Yes. Isaiah chapter 58, um, the prophet says... He's rebuking the nation of Israel mm -hmm. for their times of fasting because there's no change. And he says, you call this fasting? Here's what I call fasting. And then he goes into this, um, this caring for the poor and caring about justice and mercy yes. And, yes. and righteousness. Mm -hmm. You see, this time of fasting and prayer should change us, mm -hmm. who we are as individuals. And that's my prayer. Mm -hmm. So I pray that we would know him better. And I pray that we would be changed for the assignment that God has for us Amen. in 2022. 20, Amen. So. Amen. Any final thoughts? No, I was just thinking as you were talking about that, um, in our society, we want to all prove our point. That's hmm. like on social media and all that, you know. And really, as we get before Christ, we are all leveled at the foot of the cross. Amen. And so it's not about having to push our point it's really about loving christ and loving others and yeah it's like what you said this time of fasting and prayer we should be changed yeah. it's not mm. just about praying for change around us right. but praying that our hearts would be changed amen listen i'm going to close with reading the lord's prayer uh, before i do that though i would encourage you to download the center point church app and follow along the 21 day mm. uh, prayer focus there's uh, on there you can see uh, scripture and a prayer focus. And uh, you can also respond to us and let us know what God's doing in your life. Mm -hmm. So let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, who trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 God bless Amen. you.